Hey there, thanks for watching. This is Christiana on the Well Behaved Wallet. So right now I'm in the process of closing out my spending for March and looking at my upcoming plan for April. Given the state of the world at the moment, things are kind of in, in flux and changing all around us, but I really wanted to take the time to spend some extra attention and um, love on my grocery budget because that's one of the categories that is the most prone to overspending, um, along with eating out and personal care. And especially in uncertain times and really kind of troubling situations, I find that my grocery spending is the first to go kind of out the window. So I really looked at that extra heavily this month and I'm gonna share with you kind of what I saw happen in the month of March and how I'm going to adjust during the month of April going forward. So my budget, for March was $200, and that's pretty much my set it and forget it grocery budget. Sometimes I'll go above that, sometimes I'll go below that, but 200 is usually my baseline. That's a little bit low, given that I'm usually buying for myself and my mom who lives with me, but that's a comfortable level for me. Um, and it, it's really a number that I, I, I feel decent with. So what I had also been doing ever since October was I had been spending in all cash for my groceries and also my gas. So I would take out, at the end of every week, I would take out um, $100 and I would have that in cash for both gas and groceries. And that had been working really well for me in October. I'll link to my October grocery spending challenge um, so you can check that out. It, it had helped me really be more mindful and more conscious of my spending and I found tremendous value in that. In the month of March, I um, found that my spending, because my spending changed and I did end up going over budget, um, I will no longer be using cash. And the reason why is I have found purely on a, um, on a sort of gut level, given that there's already so much uncertainty and stress and almost a feeling of panic, using the cash it does, the reason I use cash and the reason that science tells us to use cash if we wanna spend less is because cash causes pain. I don't feel like we need any more pain in this situation right now. So I'm going to be moving away from an all cash spending and allowing myself to use a debit card. I still have a spending amount limit set and I'll get into that a little bit more later, but I'm not going to use cash anymore because the idea here is to stabilize and to allow myself to feel more a feeling of, of calm and comfort and it's going to be okay and for me the way to do that for this month the month of april to be reevaluated in the month of may or as things change um the way for me to do that in my grocery spending is to go back to the debit card so that's kind of what i'm doing as far as the mechanics of how i'm spending so getting into my recap of march and how that went so i mentioned i have my budget of 200 dollars, and that's what i had at the start of the month I went, my company went to remote work from home in the second week of March and I had been working from home ever since and pretty much under lockdown ever since. I'm in the Northeastern US, so we're one of the epicenters for the, um, the hot spots, the sort of um, progression. And it's been really kind of uh, troubling, concerning, terrifying, all those words um, to watch the progression. Um, of this particular situation. So that being said, um, as this relates to my grocery budget, it got pretty scary out there. And um, even though for the moment I was stocked on things like toilet paper and paper towels, um, I couldn't find things like tuna fish or um, cheap versions. Of, like there were, there was no produce, there was no fresh meat. These things that are that I kind of look at sold quickly, and that made me scared. So what happened was in an effort to kind of stock up. If I saw something that I liked that, it, that was at a good price, I would just grab it. Or even if it wasn't at a good price, I would grab it. And that I know contributed to my overspending. So here are the things that contributed to my overspending. Number one, it was certainly that panic buy, that panic, but also kind of me thinking, oh, it was, it's a prudent thing to do because you see this thing and you don't know when you're gonna see this thing ever again. So it was that panic prudence. Number two, I just, like everyone else, I needed some feeling of comfort. So I bought, bought that extra bag of chips, I bought that almond and butter. I bought that extra pint or three of um, yeah, Halo Top ice cream. So these are for sure, that's a real thing, man. That's self-comforting. That is for real. And that happened this month. Um, and number three was that I guess I didn't realize how fortunate I was to have snacks and soda provided for me at work and just how much of that I ended up eating and drinking. So now I'm buying my own snacks and buying my own soda and that I know contributed to my overspend. 
So here are the numbers. Uh, my budget was twenty at two hundred dollars. I went over that by one hundred and sixty one percent. I ended up spending five hundred and twenty three dollars in groceries this month. I know it was a little scary and I actually called my sister on the way home and was like freaking out being like, oh my gosh, I, I don't usually spend this much. I don't know what, what, what's going on. And she kind of was able to talk me down off the ledge and be like, look, sometimes the extra comfort of knowing that there's a loaf of bread in the freezer is worth spending that extra little bit or however much it might be. Um, my mom requested fudge sickles the other day and I'm like, you know what? You're gonna get fudge sickles and you're gonna get the brand name fudge sickles. So I am happy to do that for you. So <laughs> little things like that, um, I think is, is totally, um, if that's a way that we can find to get through this, then, then we're going to do that. I'm aiming to do that with, an, with a, a sense of mindfulness and um, forethought to that. Here are my strategies going into April, what I'm going to do as far as my grocery budget goes to adjust and account for the circumstances in the, the current world and also to make sure that I am being prudent and planning um, and really thinking about financial health and future because this is not going to last forever and I want to have that in mind as well. So step number one is I'm just going to adjust my budget. I'm or I'm going to be spending on the debit card, but I'm also going to give myself a little bit more money. I'm going to give myself $550 and just be done with it. Guilt free. There you go. I'm going to be pulling back in food out. Obviously, <laughs> nobody's spending money on food out. I also don't do delivery or takeout or fast food. I very rarely eat out. It's just not a priority for me. Um, a lot of my friends had been um, trying to support local businesses by ordering takeout and I fully support that. It's just not something that's in my worldview at the moment. Um, so I hardly ever do that. Um, so this is strictly the grocery budget. So I'm taking my food out budget all the way down to zero. My gas budget's getting cut in half down to $100 cash, which I think should probably be doable. So that's kind of how I'm going to adjust for that in the spending plan. Step number two is I'm going to do a complete inventory of everything I have in my freezer, my pantry, and my shelves. I've kind of been doing this as I go along. I've been like digging around, getting out that like last little like something that I threw in the freezer. Um, funny story, I actually thought I, I'd come on some like a meal that I had saved. It wasn't, it was actually our saved um, compost <laughs> or, or um, food garbage that I put in the freezer um, to throw out with the garbage. I just forgot to throw it out. Um, so I've been inventorying my freezer and really making a point to use what I have as opposed to going out and buying something else. And that's for sure given me an extra sense of calm in the midst of the storm that's going on. So that's a huge thing. Number three is that I am making a plan. I am um, trying to schedule out my, my snacks and, and my meals. I don't always stick to that plan. I'll be the first to say that that's not really something that I do. I do have a meal plan and I have meals that I, I enjoy making and sometimes I'll make them, but when it comes to planning out my meals, it's not something that I love to do, but it's something that I will be doing because I don't wanna overspend again. Uh, step number four is that I'm gonna just make a list when I go shopping. This is already part of my habit that I'm doing, um, but I've been finding myself kind of going off list a whole lot because again, when you see those things that are in stock that aren't, that haven't been in stock in, in weeks, you sometimes wanna like grab a whole cart full and you know, run off with them. Two examples, number one, I was looking for bleach the other day, um, the other day, <laughs> for the past three weeks, I've been looking for bleach because it was one of those items that I had thought about way back in January, um, like, oh, bleach to bleach my whites or, you know, to do laundry with. And I just never picked up. It was 88 cents at the time. Um, and then this whole mess of a situation hits and I couldn't find bleach. Of course I couldn't find bleach because people need that for, um, it's an in-demand item. So I've been looking for that for weeks. Um, I finally found it at a Walmart, like 10 miles away from the house, which isn't that far. But I, I totally went overboard. Instead of buying one thing, I bought like six things and I bought the brand name bleach. I bought the Clorox kind, the chlorine free, like no drip gel and like three different formulas. Um, I thought that was justified because now I'm good for bleach and I don't have to make another trip out there for a while. But that's just one of those things. And I know that that's a reason that why I overspent that's 10 bucks right there. Um, but it was on the list, so I felt justified. <laughs> the idea is I try to stick to my list. And so item number five, let me tell you, I'm going to economize when possible. So uh, speaking of soda, because that's a big one for me, I guess. I, I used to be a huge drinker of that. I mean, I'm talking like four cases every two weeks, like really bad. I would have like five or six cans. 
a day. That's terrible for you. I am under no illusion. It is awful for you. That was like my treat thing. Um, I had weaned myself down. I, I stepped down to seltzer and then I stepped even further and I was just drinking water. Um, but this kind of, this, this whole situation hit and I went back on the soda. And I had also, if I did get it, I was getting the store brand. So I'll get like ShopRite or Walmart brand soda, which I actually, which is fine for me. Um, so normally that's at like $3 a case and the name brand stuff's like five if you don't buy it on, on a good sale. Um, and the other day I went out and I bought two big cases of soda. I got some Diet Dr. Pepper and I got some Coke Zero um, orange vanilla flavor, which I don't recommend by the way, not, not, not so great. Um, but that's, that's not economizing. And I really want to focus on making cuts where I can, where they're justified and not letting the whole idea of panic or, or comfort buying spill over into all areas of my budget. So those are my plans. That's my strategy for April going forward. Um, let me know how you're planning on dealing with your budget or if this has been a huge thing for you, if you're checking in on it, um, just just try to stay mindful. That's the biggest thing I am trying to, to pass on and to do for myself is to stay aware and not be sort of carried away in this tide of, of um, concern. So that's where I am for April. And as always, I thank you for watching and I hope you'll keep watching. Stay well. Um, Love the people you can, love the people that are close to you, and take care.